Blog Talk Radio. I'll be taking this word from Isaiah chapter 40. If you want to turn your swords to Isaiah chapter 40. Amen. God is good. We have a lot to thank him for, y'all. And let's keep people in prayer, especially those that are getting operations. A lot of people um, being hit with um, physical problems. The devil knows his time is short, and he's trying to mess with everybody that he can. So let's keep them in prayer. And as you will see, as I read Isaiah chapter 40, I'll start with uh, chapter uh, verse 28. Um, it's not just certain people who are going through things in life. Even the young people are. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not just the Christians. It's not just the mothers. It's not just the fathers. It's everyone that is going through something. This world is really getting crazy. You cannot go to a movie without worrying about being shot. You cannot go to a mall without worrying about being shot. You know, churches synagogues no matter where you go uh the other the, uh, what last week the other day a man went into walmart and killed people just walked in shooting the enemy is using his demons and his spirits to uh, to, to to scare people to kill people to rob people of their joy and to set fear into people amen but but god Amen. And you know, and, and people ask, well, why do good things, I'm sure you heard it yourself, why do good thing, uh, bad things happen to good people? Well, you know, I think we need to just start learning how to say we don't know. We don't know. You know, so many people want to try to come up with an answer. We don't know. You know, there have been times, there have been times that uh, things happen because of man's blunders. Amen. You know, man, the man just didn't do his job right, and it costs people their lives. Now, when we're allowing our children to sit back and play those games, killing and robbing and lusting and raping and, and all that other kind of stuff, some of those games are horrible. I don't know if you ever saw one, but they are horrible. You could pick up a prostitute and, and, and just do that thing in the back of the vehicle on the game. And the car moves up and down, jumps up and down, and you can run people over. Uh, and they, they show blood splattering. You could shoot cops. You can shoot people. It's, it's horrible. And, 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 and people, I don't understand why we here in America think that's cute. We think it's funny. Well, I guess it's because it's keeping the kids quiet, right? Nah, that's not, you know, that's not godly. The, you know, the enemy is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Here's the question. Are we getting stronger? Amen. All right, Isaiah uh, uh, 40, verse 28 reads like this. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is he weary. See, God doesn't get tired like us. He doesn't get tired. God meant for you to have joy. He meant for you to have good, uh, good health. He meant for you to have peace in your life. There is an evil enemy working against that, killing you of your vitality. And we have to recognize this. Amen. It says, there is no searching of his understanding. God cannot get tired, y'all. And read verse 30, uh, 29. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. He gives power to the faint. When you get to the point where you feel like you just can't take it anymore, you've been through a lot in your life and you just, just can't take it anymore, you need help. You need somebody on your side. You need somebody to talk to. Amen. He's the one. Learn to not only talk and listen, not just talk to him, but to listen for him, for his voice. To answer you and talk back to you. Amen. There's too many people wasting time doing things, listening to radios, listening to TV all day long, doing this and doing that, and chatterboxing all over the place. They go to work, they chatterbox. They go to church, they chatterbox. And some people sit up in church and don't even listen to what the preacher's preaching on. They couldn't even tell you what the sermon was about because they were eating food, eating candy, and chatterboxing, you know, in the pews while the preacher was preaching. 
no time we have no time nowadays for the lord and then we wonder why things happen and just like i said a lot of times it's not god's fault and sometimes it's not even the devil's fault it's true it's true man is not doing what he is supposed to be doing and wondering why things go wrong you know airplanes go down and they find out there was a bolt missing or a bolt loose that, that someone was supposed to loosen and didn't loose it. That wasn't God and it wasn't the devil either. You know, things happen. You know, people uh, people drive around with no brakes. You know, they're, they're bra- they know those brakes are bad when they first hear them squeaking. Okay? And they don't take care of the brakes and something happens. And the first thing people do is they blame it. Why, God, why would you allow this to happen? Or that's nobody but say, no, it was the person that didn't take care of business the way they were supposed to. That is sometimes it's man's fault. So when things happen, you know, um, we need to stop blaming other entities, other people, other things. You know, when you don't stay home and take care of your household the way you should, okay, your mate's going to cheat on you. We need people. That is the purpose of marriage. Man needs woman and woman needs man. And no, God didn't make Adam and Steve. He made Adam and Eve. Amen. Amen. See, and it says he gives power to the faint. So when you're feeling down and when you're feeling bad, don't let it get to you. Don't let it knock you out and take you out of here. Amen. Just pray and ask him to help you. Hallelujah. How many of us, hopefully, you listening, do that. I hope you pray and ask him to help you. Amen. Because he will. He loves answering our prayers. He absolutely loves answering our prayers. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he's, not, he's not the kind of God that will just leave you hanging. He doesn't like watching you um, go through things. He doesn't like to watch you suffer. He's not that kind of God. He's a good God. Hallelujah. And you know the word also says you have not because you ask not. Think about that. You have not because you ask not. Have you asked him for what you need? Have you had a talk with him? Hallelujah. Or have you listened to the world more than you have talked to the Father? He doesn't get tired. So when you keep keep asking him. Just like the woman, the woman that kept asking the judge and bothering the judge and bothering the judge. She literally bothered him and got to him so much that he just gave her what she wanted. Because she kept asking him. She didn't give up. I hope you're not giving up. Don't give up on that cure for cancer. Don't give up on that cure for diabetes. Don't give up whenever you you claim good health. I claim good health. You wake up in the morning, and while you're cleaning up, you look in the mirror, and you go, I claim good health in my life. I speak life into my day today. I speak all good things into my day. I thank God for waking me up. I speak against witch. I bind witchcraft in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All these things. Keep doing it. Don't ever give up. When you're praying for your kids on a Monday and nothing happens to them on a Tuesday, pray for them again on Tuesday and Wednesday and on and on and on. Keep on praying. Amen. Because God, he says, gives power to the, he gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases your strength. See, the more you pray, your prayers are not going unheard. And neither are your tears. The Bible says God puts our tears into a bottle. Amen. You are not going unheard. Hallelujah. He hears you. Hallelujah. He loves you. You're not alone. Amen. Even the youth. Verse 30 says, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. 
This is human weakness. You know, there used to be a time where young people, you know, the older people sat around and watched young people playing or doing whatever they wanted to do or going out and having fun and going to dances and, and, what, and you know, and games at their school and everything. And they had the energy. The young people had the power. The young people had the vitality, you know, and they even came up with those movies with what, the, the who, who was he, the Dracula or whatever. And whenever he bit you, he just dragged all of the life out of you and they they came up with all them crazy movies and everything and it was always geared you notice it was always geared towards young people because why young people had the vitality see they had the energy they had the vitamin d they had the sunshine in them the energy of god in them they had they they had life in them but you know as time went on and the more we allowed evil to enter this world they got tireder and weaker and the more they played those games and listened to that crazy music and had those idols above god they had those those uh, uh idols of, of entertainment and everything they got weaker you notice young people nowadays a lot of them not all of course but they, they're weaker and they're led so easily. And I sometimes wonder myself, I've said this myself, I would not be surprised if those evil games that they are playing with the headphones and everything like them all evil, nasty, lustful, murderous games, I would not be surprised if a hacker from another country is hacking into those games and, 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 and signaling things through their brain and, and, and sending, sending uh, how do, what do they call it, uh, pseudo signals or whatever through their brain and causing these kids to, their minds to snap. If you look at it, look at these young people that are caught, that have been shooting people and they take them in, 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 into custody and you see their faces, look at their faces. They are out of here. They look like they don't have a soul. They stare into the camera and they look crazy like they have no soul. Something's happening, folks. And, and then... You know, we have the government that tried to tell us how to take care of our kids. If you beat your kids, you go to jail. If you correct your kids, you get in trouble. You get tickets from the magistrate or the police or whatever. And it got to the point where throughout the years, parents just gave they back off. It got a little bit at a time. You say, how did Hitler take over Poland? He caused them to argue with each other. And while they were arguing with each other, he, he just took over. And that's what the devil does. He causes people to argue with each other. While the while the, 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 uh, the government is arguing with the people, the people who are supposed to be the government, actually, the government works for us, they're arguing with the government. The, and, and while all this mess is going on, our kids have no hope. And half the churches aren't even preaching the right Jesus. The kids are looking for help. They're looking for hope. They're looking for comfort. And we are preaching everything except the salvation of Yeshua Hama, Sheikh Jesus the Christ. And that's why verse 30 says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. They, young people are weary because the ones that are supposed to be teaching them are, have their minds on something else. Bills, gas, electric, water, phone, cell phones are nine million dollars nowadays. Amen. House note, car note, always. You notice there's always some kind of note or it's something that always deals with money somehow. We have to be very, very careful of what we make an idol in our lives. Verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Not they that wait upon the loan company. Not they that wait upon the bank. Amen. Not they that wait upon the trustees of the church. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. You know when eagles fly above the storm? 
When there's a storm, eagles fly. They literally fly above the storm. They can look down and see the clouds, the storm and everything. Eagles use the storm to maintain their height. How high are you? What do you see when you look down? Trebles? Amen? Or do you see a God that is working in your life so much that he actually has you in a higher position in life than you've ever been because you've been trusting in him? And they shall run and not be weary. You're going to run and run and run. And one song says, I'm running for my life. Amen. Run. Sometimes you might feel like you're running for your life. But you know what? Keep running. You may get tired sometimes and have to have God's angels. Just like Jesus did. Have God's angels to take care of you and strengthen you. But don't you give up because you're not going to get weary. Just keep running. Just keep running. And you're not going to be weary. Because Jesus said, come unto me all ye. That labor and I'll give you rest. Give it to Jesus. And you know what? One of the things I love about our Lord Jesus. You can run and still be at rest. <laughs> Amen. He can mess with your family. He can mess with your finances. He can mess with your heart. Mess with your mind. Mess with your body and your emotions. But Jesus fights the battle, so actually you are still at rest. You just experience the the intrusion, but the blood of Jesus Christ stops it all. Amen. And they shall walk and not faint. Walk on. You remember that song, a Christian song he used to sing years ago? Um, when you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. Amen. Then at the end it says, walk on. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you now, walk on. Hold on. Hallelujah. You say you believe in Jesus Christ. Don't allow the enemy to bother you to shake your tree. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I like in, in verse 40, and I'll go to chapter 41. You look at verse 10. And he says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I'll help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing and they shall strive with thee uh, shall they shall strive with thee shall perish. He is telling you right there. He is fighting your battles and everybody that gave you a hard time is going to wish that they didn't. Because God fights your battles and he is going to take care of them. And he he says, behold, in verse 11, Isaiah 41, 11, Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confound, confounded. All those, all those people that had open doors to the enemy, okay, that called their self turning against you, and the majority of them turned against you because they were children of the... They were <laughs> children of the corn anyway, <laughs> you know, children of Belial. That's why they got mad at you. You aggravated them. Your, your holiness, your spirit aggravated their demons. And what he's going to do is, he says, they shall be ashamed and confounded. The wicked are going to be ashamed and confounded. So if it looks like they're winning over you, don't pay any attention to that. Numbers don't lie, but the devil does. Okay. 
don't pay any attention to that because it, it, their time will come. Colossians 3.25, I believe it says, what goes around comes around. Their time will come. God, don't, don't forget, God doesn't operate on our time. Amen. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou, uh, it says, thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee. <laughs> even the people that were messing with you. You're not going to be able to find them. God's going to take care of them so well. Trust me, I know by personal experiences. God took such good care of those that contended with me that I can't even find them to this day. And I won't get any deeper into that, okay? Trust me. He says, even them that contended with thee, they, uh, they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. I will help thee. And I, I don't want to get too deep in this, but personally, a lot of people, I won't watch my words here, but a lot of people that messed with me in my life, or in the grave today, young and old. God fought my battles and I just sat back and watched. So, you know, he says, touch not my anointed and do my promise no harm. And you will not have to lift a finger. When somebody wants to be your enemy, God will treat them like they are your enemy. And they will wish they left you alone. I'm, I'm telling you that now. There are people in their grave today, and yet I still live. They gave me a hard time and tried to hinder me in my life. So when God says, I will fight your battles, believe that, as they say. He will fight your battles until the end. And what happens is, it's, that's not witchcraft, that's nothing like that. It is pure word. When a person acts like your enemy, God will treat them like they are your enemy. There is a uh, word in the Bible where David says, your enemies, Lord, are my enemies. He knew his enemies were the Lord's enemies, and he said, the, and the Lord's enemies was his enemies. He said, I hate those that hate you. Those are some serious words. Now, as Jesus tells us in the New Testament to love, right? And that's why you think. Everybody says, why does he always tell people to love? Why would he say something like that to us? He to love your enemies. He's telling you to love your enemies so that the ones that are hard-headed and keep trying to come up against you, when something finally happens to them, when that Colossians 3.25 comes back on them, their blood is not on your hands. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Amen. Their blood is not on your hands. Their families cannot come back and say that you did something to them because it wasn't you. They did it to themselves by dogging you and, and, and killing your character and criticizing you at every moment in time and talking down to you like you were Cinderella sitting in a chair by the fire by the coals like you weren't worth a dime treating you second hand God saw it all so when it, 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 it so that's why they say when Jesus said, love your enemies, love them, do your best to treat them kindly and nicely, and the rest is up to them, amen, God sits back and watches, and he says, well, my son and my daughter, they did what I told them to do, and I'm proud of them, so let me fight this battle for them. This person wants to be relentless. They won't get up off of my child. They won't leave my child alone. So, uh, 
I'll take care of it. God says, I got your back. I recently put a video on uh, Facebook called God Got Your Back. And that is very, very true. He sees how people treat you. He knows what people are doing to you. God got your back. In some serious words, but it's very, very true. People bring things upon themselves. And sometimes people do things to you, and, and they know you can't see it. They think, they think, oh, well, he won't see me, she won't see me. You know, they do things in the dark, and they think people can't see them. But guess who did? God did. Some things people do, sometimes people do things to you, and you don't even know they did it. <laughs> God works in our favor that good. There are things he has done for you that you, to this moment, listening to this, you don't even know about. When we finally get to heaven... And God shows us all the things, all the times in our lives that his angels were there to guide us and to guard us and to protect us. It's going to blow our mind. Amen. He's that good. Amen. Hallelujah. People are tired. The time today is so crazy. People are tired. What we need to do is, what we should do is, we should find a place in our homes since it's getting so hard. To, listen, I know this might sound crazy to you, but since it's getting so hard for us to be able to go out into the public to go to go to churches you know since the enemy is out there so thick we have to prepare folks we have to plan you find a place in your home and i've heard a few other preachers say the same thing find a place in your home that is your portal to heaven your prayer place amen a closet a room Make make an uh, you know your own altar, whatever it is you know that, that that takes you into a wonderful meditation. I'm not talking about the meditation with your legs crossed and your um and all night long. I'm just saying where you can meditate on the Lord and on His Word. Amen. Find a private place where you can talk to Him, and it's a hot seat, and you know He heard you, and you know you hear Him. Amen. Because it's going down. It's going down. And there are a lot of people that need prayer. There are a lot of people that need prayer. And we have to pray for them. You know the Bible says Job got blessed when he what? Prayed for himself. Job got blessed when he prayed for his friends. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray for people. The world needs you. Amen. Are you saved? If you're not saved, just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I want to learn of you. Be my Savior. I believe you died on that cross. And rose three days later just for me. Showing victory openly. You became all sin just for me. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I love you, Jesus, and amen. And if you said that, find a Bible believing church. That knows how to teach the Bible. Find a find a church where the preacher actually uses the Bible. Amen. Okay, okay, and and start learning about speaking to the Lord in your heaven near heavenly language, and 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 you get baptized, and and it is not necessary to your salvation, but boy does it help. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. And the church that has Bible studies where the preacher is not. How the songs say, some people put the preacher on a pedestal. No. Find a church where Jesus is raised high and lifted up. Find a church that loves people. Don't find a church because of its race, creed, or color, or denomination. Find a church that is free in Christ Jesus and preaches that entire Bible. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Let me be the first to welcome you to the body of Christ. The Bible says every time somebody gets saved, angels celebrate in heaven over one person that gets saved. And they just did that for you. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming on and listening. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can write me at revessi at me.com. M-E. I guess it's Mac Enterprises or whatever. And, um, and, uh, I pray for you. I will keep you in prayer. I have a prayer group on uh, Facebook, New Birth Ministries. And my private page, Esther R. Scott. And I also have the uh, ministry page, New Birth Ministries, on Facebook. So, God bless you. Thank you for coming on. And I would love to see you back again next Sunday at 10 a.m. God bless you and your family. Reverend Nessie signing off. Amen.